When I was 13, I read in Time magazine about this Harvard IBM Mark I computer, which Howard Aiken had been the architect of and IBM had been the designer of. And it, as far as the world knew, it was the first programmable computer to, to actually run. And we didn't know about Conrad Zuse's machine that behind Hitler's Iron Curtain that had run a couple of years earlier. And this, this really impressed me. This, this was a, the drawing of it was a Art Zibrashev monster with the machine itself was 60 feet long, eight feet high, a couple of feet deep with rotating counters for storage and uh, electrical clutching and programmed with a punch paper tape. So it, it operated at uh, three operations a second. <laughs> But it ran, it ran from time I was, when I went to graduate school in 53, it was still being used by the Air Force because it had 24 decimal digits of precision. And for things like some earth orbital calculations, that precision was needed. When I finished high school, there were no places to study computers. Uh, when I finished college, there were five places in the US and two in the UK. And Aiken seemed to me like the right person and Harvard liked the right place. And so, and that, that was a inspired choice. Uh, the, the Lord has led me in some wonderful ways at, at many turns and uh, the gift of studying under Aiken and with Ken Iverson at Harvard was one of those real blessings. Mm -hmm. Aiken, had come up with the concept of the of the Mark I when he was, a, I think, an assistant professor of electrical engineering. He had founded his own lab, had gotten funding for it, had built a succession of four computers. The Mark II was a relay machine, the Mark III was a magnetic drum machine, and the Mark IV was a, a, a vacuum tube vacuum tube machine with magnetic drum storage. And that was that had been put into operation the year before I got there. So that 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 was the running machine in the machine room along with the Mark I facing facing each other. Um, Aiken had a very strong personality. I would say he was a domineering character. Or during the years then when the Navy was operating the lab during the war, he was the commander. And then thereafter, all the rest of us called him the boss. He was the boss, and there was no question as to who was the boss. He was a superb thesis advisor. He aimed us each at a problem, but then he turned us loose on how to go at it. And he came, if he was in, in Cambridge, he came to my office every day and wanted to see fresh prose. And this was true of Peter Callinger and Bill Wright and the, the other graduate students. And this meant that uh, I finished in three years because there always was fresh prose <laughs> every day. Uh, the, after the summer, the spring of my first year there, Aiken had as a new instructor, not even an assistant professor, one of his PhD students who had was finishing that term, and Ken Iverson, and he told, he had three that year, and he told Ken, I want you to teach a course in business data processing. There was not a course, as far as we know, there was not a course in the world in business data processing. All the computers were built for science and were used for science. But Aiken thought they would be more important for business than for science, and so he was very foresightful in that direction. Well, Ken had done his dissertation on solving uh, input-output system, helping use computers to solve what economists call input-output systems, matrices with thousands of columns and hundreds of rows. Um, 
And so he, and he was a mathematician by background. Never went to high school, but <laughs> had, got, had gotten his master's and his PhD. And as soon as I heard that, I ran over to him. A Aiken had coffee for the whole team in the machine room every day at five if he was in Cambridge. And we all chatted for a half hour or so, and then he would go to supper. And we'd go to our several ways. So this was happening one of those afternoons. And so I ran over to Ken and said, can I be your t teaching assistant? So he didn't know what else to say, so he said yes. And so for two years, we shared an office and we put together this first course in business data processing. And since I had punch guard experience and training, I, d I taught that part of the course. He had worked on algorithms and a way of representing algorithms mathematically, which got more and more complicated as it went, but was very powerful. And Aiken taught me a lot, but a Iverson maybe taught me more, including how to write. So every time I have a draft, I Iverson would tear it apart and really did more for my writing. I started out, we, we were allowed to dictate our dissertations. Uh, and I started out doing that and I realized it came out a lot more words than it needed and it took more time to edit than to write it. So then I moved to a typewriter and I still found I could type faster than I could think. So I moved to a dip pen and that was geared to my slow rate of thinking. <laughs> How did you come to write automatic data processing with that? Well, as a result of the two years, we, of course, the next year we did, redid the course. You always do the second, second year from what you learned the first year. And then we said, well, we ought to write a book. And so we set out to write a book. And what, when we sent it off to the publishers to review, their reviewers came back and said, this needs to be two books. And so we split it into two books the mathematical language that had been refined by this time and tested pretty thoroughly was described in Ken's book, APL, and then the, the joint book, Automatic Data Processing, covered everything else in the course. Manual data processing, punch card data processing, algorithm sorting, machine language programming, all, all of that. And so, the, an interesting story is that Ken did not get tenure after five years at Harvard. And need, needless to say, he went to see the dean and asked him why the, he didn't get tenure. And the dean said, well, you haven't published anything except one little book. Ken later got the Turing Award for that one little book and nothing really more. <laughs> <laughs>